Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Burgers. On today's video, I'm going to be doing a copycat recipe of the Rocket Burger out of the Windsor Tavern from Akron, Ohio. Let's get going. All right, this video is a request from a viewer named Earl. And I'm telling you right now, Earl, I'm sure you've already noticed, I had to make two very minor adjustments. The first one's apparent because of the thumbnail. The Windsor Tavern uses Kaiser Rolls. I used Kaiser Rolls, but theirs do not have any sesame seeds on them. And the store I shop my, buy my buns at, they were out of regular Kaiser Rolls. So I honestly think this may be an improvement. Maybe Windsor, if you're watching, think about sesame seeds. Start out with a patty. So this patty, they are generous. This is a fairly simple burger. <laughs> Look at this, 12 ounces. That's, for those of you in Europe or every place else that uses the metric system, 340 grams of ground beef. I'm using 80-20. So I have my burger ring out. Lay this bad boy down. I'm just gonna pack it. I don't wanna mash it because on a thick burger like this, it's very important that the steam can escape and the juices can move around or else you're gonna end up with a very swollen burger, like a football. This is ginormous. I mean, <laughs> there we go. I'm going to season this just very simply, some kosher salt. So we're cooking this burger on the Blackstone griddle. I have these two burners on medium high, this one on low, the far burner is completely off. We're going to need to do zones here. Look at that. If we try to just cook this the full time on, you know, that medium high, we're gonna end up with like a blackened burger on the outside and it's going to be pretty raw on the inside. So let's get this thing going. Salt on the other side. So I'm gonna get my spatula heated up just a little bit because I'm gonna press down on the top of the burger just to make sure it fully adheres to the flat top here to get a nice sear. And I just don't want a cold spatula, you know, causing any lift on that meat. All right, so I'm gonna press it, not real hard, but just again, I want that nice kind of even contact with this uh, flat top. Shout out to the folks over at the Windsor Tavern. Um, they're in Akron, Ohio. I'm here in San Diego, California. It's a neighborhood, a small neighborhood tavern. So there's actually very little as far as online to, for me to help do a little recon on this burger. I gave them a call. The young lady I spoke with on the phone was very, very helpful. So thank you guys. I'll have a link to Windsor Tavern down below. And if you're in the area of Akron, make sure you stop by because they're good people. I would imagine at the Windsor Tavern, I'm just kind of guessing, but I would imagine that they're running their flat top at a pretty low temperature just so they can have mass amounts of these big thick burgers on there and not have to worry about, again, ending up with overcooked on the outside and raw on the inside. This is the way I'm doing this because I'm only cooking one burger. If I were cooking four, I'd be doing it this way, but if I had, you know, 15, 10, whatever, I'd be definitely cooking at a nice lower temperature here. So what I'm looking at right now is you can see the color change going up the side of the burger. And I'm going to wait for that color change to get about halfway before I flip. All right, so you see that color now, it's about halfway. I think it's time to flip. Looks good. So I'm going to continue to watch the side of this patty here. I want it to be gray, wall-to-wall -wall gray. And then once it is, I'm going to move it over to a cooler zone where again, it will continue to cook, but I don't have to worry about, again, red raw meat in the center. All right, this is looking pretty good here. So now what I'm going to do is just simply slide this over to my cooler zone. I'm going to allow it to cook. Okay, this burger is getting close to being done. There's a couple things you can do on a burger this thick. If you want to play it safe, by all means, you know, probe it with like an instant read pen. Um, 
depending on what you want, you know, if, if you want that kind of a well done 160, or you can kind of just lightly push on the side here and it'll expel some juices. And when you see that juice, when it's turning the color you want it to be, you can kind of judge it that way. So we're going to move on to the next ingredient here, salami. And I have two, these are pretty thin slices. I'm going with two. I don't know if they use one or two pieces of salami, but they put grilled salami down on this burger. It's also time to get a toast on these Kaiser rolls. And again, these are seeded, which is fine. <laughs> this one here flipped itself. How cool is that? We have a nice light toast on these buns. Move them over to this cool side, along with the salami. Not ready to get into some business here with this big burger patty. Okay, I have here some banana pepper rings. Now, per the conversation I had with this young lady at the Windsor, she said they're using fresh banana pepper rings. We didn't have any fresh banana peppers at my store, so I had to go with pickled. So that's the second change I made on this. And again, it was out of necessity, lack of ingredients, which is what you do, you adapt, right? Adapt and overcome. So I'm gonna to top this burger right now with these, I love, I personally love pickled banana peppers. They use provolone cheese and looking at the photos of the burgers, like on Yelp, looks like a lot of provolone. So I'm going with two slices because these are pretty darn thin. We're going to dome it. I always like to add a little bit of water just for some steam. All right. So let's go ahead and get this burger patty down. Now I'm thinking what I should have done is put the salami slices down on that burger patty, then the peppers and then the cheese, but we all make mistakes. It'll still have the salami on it. Put the salami down next angry at myself this is a mistake that you can't you know I can't go back I mean, this is a big thick patty I can't cook it over again so again learn from my mistakes so now what I have here is some ranch dressing and what I did was I bought the you know the Hidden Valley Ranch packet and mixed it up it's like with whole milk and mayo and you end up with a much better dressing than if you buy it in the bottle I think So go ahead and lay this ranch dressing down. Crown this beauty. Look at this beast. This is an intimidatingly huge burger right here. All right, let's give this a try. <laughs> You know, I was thinking about the whole salami ordeal. I'm calling it an ordeal. It actually makes sense to put the salami on top of the cheese. And this is something I didn't ask the, the young lady at the tavern when I was talking to her. But you know, you would with bacon. I, I would put the salami on top of the cheese with bacon. So look at that. It's a little bit scary, guys. It's got some heft. Smells really good. Cheers. Mmm. Very juicy. So this is really good. Right, I mean, beef, beef, beef. It's a beefy flavored burger. I mean, definitely that gigantic beef patty is stealing the show as far as flavors are concerned. But once you really start getting into it, like more into the center like off the edges then those peppers and that that tangy salami start kind of helping out with the flavors ranch dressing great call uh, you know I, I was a little skeptical about the ranch dressing but it, it definitely works it, it plays well with the other flavors going on here but I don't know I mean I'm digging on 
the pickled peppers, I'm, I'm, I honestly think because it, it needs that acid, that vinegar flavor, it's such a big patty. I think that the acid from the vinegar and that, you know, the pickling juice, <laughs> it, it helps. It helps with this burger. It needs it needs that acid. Mm. Yeah, I like it. There's layers. I mean, again, that kind of fermented tangy flavor from the, from the salami. Then the nice crunch from that pepper. I like the pickled pepper. I would not change it personally. Cheese, great call. You could, with, with a beef patty this big, you could use any. I mean, I think any cheese cheddar would work well with this. But the, the provolone's nice. I mean, it's it's you know very mild mellow cheese. You get that gooey warm gooeyness. It's a great great call on that cheese. I'm happy. I, I'm very very happy about this burger. It's a simple simple burger. I mean, if you wanted to make this at home, you don't have to use a half pound of meat or what three quarters of a pound of meat. Twelve ounces. That that's a gigantic patty. Wow. They're generous over there. So, Earl, thanks for the suggestion, guys. If you're in the Akron area, please go check out the Windsor Tavern. Like I said, based on the conversation I had with the young lady, very nice people. And especially in these times, small businesses need some support. So check them out. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell. Thumb it up if you liked the video, and I hope you did. Keep those suggestions coming in. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.